Hello and good morning. Uh, this time the webinar in the morning, normally we do it in the afternoon. So nice to see you all uh, um, here uh, on uh, Thursday morning. I have to have to look which day it is. It has been quite a week uh, and a good week. Uh, um, we take some time to let everyone in. Welcome here at the webinar, ready to take action after the double match reality analysis. Um, uh, yeah, people are dropping in uh, slowly but surely, so uh, we will uh, um, introduce ourselves already a little bit. Um, my name is uh, Skadi Mobius, um, one of the founders from Move to Impact. I'm Anna Kessela, the other founder of yeah, Impact, yeah. so <laughs> founder speaking here. Yeah. And we are um, looking forward to uh, tell you more today about uh, um, indeed all the steps that uh, companies and consultants need to take for uh, prepping companies, being ready for the corporate sustainability reporting directive there is a lot going on in the sector in the in the loss in the last uh, last weeks again uh, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, people are talking about it what is also with the due diligence and everything but um, that for a different webinar and also for what is coming afterwards but um, for today um, we chose this uh, topic because we got a lot of um, questions uh, from companies that are at the moment doing the double match reality analysis or have done the double met realities and coming to us and say like oh we know that uh, you do um, data consulting and uh, you're helping companies really um, in all the steps of uh, the corporate sustainability reporting um, so how and what kind of steps are we uh, needing to take uh, afterwards so please help us because um, everything has been done uh, so far um, or have been done in the last years from the double match reality analysis. So let's get started on uh, these um, steps that we are taking. And um, today we are obviously introducing Move to Impact a little bit more. Tell you like what were these steps precisely? Just a short reminder of like which companies do that need to do that, and also. Um, what the double match reality analysis again was, if you are like checking in uh, for the first time to our webinars, um, then uh, really diving deeper into the CSRD implementation and reporting and how we as Move to Impact uh, can help you uh, in this uh, challenging steps. <laughs> And please feel free um, during the webinar to um, write your questions um, in the chat um, um, so that we can uh, directly answer them. And also at the end, there will be time to uh, answer more of your questions. So let, uh, let me tell you a little bit more about our team and what we're doing. Um, in that sense, our team consists of um, sustainability consultants and data consultants really like working hand in hand together for all the steps of, uh, of the implementation of CSRD, because you see that it's definitely like a, yeah, a little sustainable transformation within a company and not only a little, at all. Quite, <laughs> quite, quite a transformation to understand for one part of the company or for the whole company, what is sustainability and what um, does it mean for our company, but also then the digitalization and data transformation within a company to not only obviously do the financial reporting, but really do the social and ecological one as well. Therefore, we see that um, not only consulting is needed, but also repetition of information. So that's why we are offering trainings, um, either like very big um, certification trainings or like uh, really for our uh, um, trainings to uh, get every one started, um, but also have tooling to really support you um, in this uh, steps to become ready for CSRD and templates so that we make it as pragmatic as possible because we don't want to create like more work. Um, we actually want to give and share basically the work with you and really prepare you for that upcoming years to really be ready for um, CSRD and do it uh, on your own. Therefore, our clients are not only companies, but also consultants and freelancers, but also auditors self to check basically for um, the companies in there. So that's uh, an important um, thing. Um, 
so let's get started um, further. Um, yeah, our clients, we helped uh, more than 90 companies already within that either and trainings, um, implementing uh, CSRD with them really uh, helped like very big groups, um, uh, like uh, bigger, uh, small, medium sized companies that are growing into needing to become CSRD compliant. So really like from all spectrums, really in the logistics, uh, food uh, industry, we just talked about it that we had like an overview. It's quite, uh, quite some companies uh, and the service and production um, industry that we are helping and really uh, make sure that they are able to make the next step basically in their CSRD journey or being prepared basically um, for it. But to have a small recap on okay, CSRD, double materiality analysis are quite some topics that you hear a lot when you're diving into the world of CSRD but to have a small reminder before we dive into uh, What's after double materiality analysis is when do you have to report um, on CSRD? Well, in this year, the, the listed companies are already working quite hard to get all the data to, together because they have to uh, present their sustainability report on book year 2024 in the beginning of 2025. But the large companies which have to report in 2026 over book year 2025 will have at least 250 employees, a balance sheet of more than 250. 25 million euros or more than 50 million revenue, two out of three criteria. And it's just in the European Union, but um, to avoid that all companies are leaving the European Union, which is quite a hot topic right now, uh, the CSRD uh, the European Commission also uh, asked that uh, non-EU companies have to report from 2028 on um, in when they have more than 150 million turnover. 50 million revenue in the European, uh, European Union. And what they have to do is they have to set up a sustainability report mm -hmm. according to reporting standards. And this is not just because we want to have a report, it's more than <laughs> we want to have transparent information about the impact of the organization, but also that we can compare which uh, companies are well, acting in a sustainable way, but also that investors now have the information that they can invest in organizations that have a sustainable future and not just sustainable in environmental social way but also in a financial way because we cannot see the one way or the other but how do we combine this looking at the impact of social environmental topics and financial topics with help of the low maturity analysis <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, already conducted it or are already working on it maybe you already know a bit of the double materiality analysis but what is the objective of the double materiality analysis can people mute by themselves <laughs> um that uh, an organization is going to identify what is the impact of the organization on society and the planet. So um, are you having good working conditions for your own employees, but also for works in the value chain, or are your daily operations impacting the planet? That's an analysis you have to do. But what's also important is to identify what are the changes in society and uh, well, on the planet that affect your company in a financial way, meaning that if um, certain regulations uh, pop up, uh, which means you cannot have people from outside of Europe work in your company, then maybe you need to arrange a new workforce uh, strategy, which influences your um, your finances. Or if you cannot have the distribution anymore because a boat um, got hit by the, the bridge <laughs> in Rotterdam, then you also have financial consequences, like uh, making a list of risks and opportunities that are caused by the organization towards society and the planet, but also things that happen outside of the organization and have a financial impact to the organization that should be all listed. And this list of risks and opportunities is not just to have a list and no, this list you have to really no. set up with help of stakeholders. So have the uh, engagement with them with help of surveys, interviews, research, uh, at least that you can show your auditor that you have not been just talking <laughs> to your colleagues about it, but really uh, went outside of the company borders to discuss what is the impact of our organization to have an open and transparent report about, well, what your company is really impacting. So that's like the CSRD main objectives and the double materiality analysis. Uh, but how to implement this? Yeah, what are really the, the next steps after this? Because this is what you either like um, going through or helping companies with or that you have done um, as a company. 
what uh, um, we see or like how our implementation process is, we developed a method um, together with data, sustainability experts, but also um, with auditors to really make it as data driven and as uh, transparent as possible. And you really see that we um, developed eight steps that are quite generic, but also very logical in order um, to become CSRD compliant. So we really start from the easy way of like the project preparation till the CSRD reporting. Um, and you can um, uh, the best basically divide it in three phases. This is the design phase, really like seeing what you actually need to report on so that um, you after the project preparation really stand still for a moment, like what company KPIs do you have at the moment and what kind of data and systems are you collecting your information in so that after the double materiality analysis, you are able to have a gap analysis and really like um, compare what do you need to report on what gets basically out of the result from the double materiality analysis and from the current company KPIs, um, what you are actually already measuring so that there is a possibility to create this gap analysis. Um, so this is basically what we are then talking about um, uh, today. So um, when then the a gap analysis uh, has been taken place, what to do then basically when you have a complete overview, we call it the golden list of requirements. Basically, this is uh, basically um, what we're all working for to have a big list basically. Um, to then in the implementation phase, really like working with your operations on connecting KPIs and then the data collection, basically, um, in order then to go and have a dashboard and overview of the ecological, social and governance uh, factors, but then also handing in uh, your CSRD uh, report. These are basically like the big main phases uh, that companies uh, and consultants basically um, go through in order to prepare for CSRD. And today we're talking about phase two and three basically the implementation and reporting phase because okay the ESRS European sustainability reporting standards they are created uh, by the European Commission to have this transparent way of communicating about the sustainable impact but also to have comparable information since until the ESRS were published every organization could just decide on themselves how do I want to uh, design my sustainability report but in order to have comparable information, you also have to have the same reporting standards. And while you're doing uh, your material materiality analysis, uh, we always advise to take the subtopics of the European sustainability reporting standards so that later it's easier to identify which of those ESRS books uh, do we have to use um, as a reporting standard. Because summarizing the ESRS, says the first two um, our books are well obligatory so the first one is just the rules of the game explaining how do you, do you look at reporting in general when you talk about averages uh, what do you need to further explain when you use certain numbers how to talk about trends just like you're playing a board game you always first have the general principles of the game then the second one, uh, ESRS 2, which is the general strategy, governance and materiality disclosure requirements, is the first part of really the reporting. So it's uh, asking you to uh, disclose on what's your business model, what's your strategy, what are the stakeholders, what's yeah. your uh, value chain, but also how did you conduct this materiality analysis? Because what the materiality analysis makes it super complex. <laughs> You can do it in any way that you want, as long as you uh, report on it um, as the ESRS uh, requires. So um, if Skadi is doing a materiality analysis and I did it in a completely different way, it's not that hers is better than mine. It, it's really about the process and that you can show uh, an audit trail of how did you come to certain answers on how, outbacks. However, if you have done it in the past, for example, um, uh, with under other standards, for example, a global reporting initiative or um, other um, standards, then you really have to look to like compare it to the ESRS, to these 12 books that you see uh, in front of 
of you and then um, you have to change that really. So make sure that um, if you have done a double materiality analysis in the last two years um, on the other standards than the ESRS to really consider in the next uh, year or one and a half years to do it again because then it um, is easier for your auditor um, yeah, to connect it to the CSRD standards basically. Um, it's not a big, uh, big problem, however, it just takes more time basically um, to, uh, yeah, uh, con connect it basically to the ESRS books. Yeah, because what you often see is that uh, organizations already conducted a materiality analysis, but it wasn't a double materiality analysis. Yeah. Only the impact, but not the financial impact was uh, reported on. But based on the materiality analysis, you're going to identify what are the material topics from materiality analysis and which ESRS books are you going to use? So what are the, maybe are you involved with climate change? Uh, do you use water and marine resources? Yes or no. If, if it, you don't have any impact on water and marine resources, you will not have to use the reporting standards on that. So materiality analysis is there to identify which ESRS books are relevant for the organization to then start with this whole list of <laughs> reporting requirements just from the ESRS to dive into the next phase. Yes, uh, we are in the second step of the implementation process, the connecting the KPIs and measurements. Why um, does it call it like that? Because your own KPIs, the KPIs that are coming out from the double materiality analysis and um, some of the KPIs from the ESRS books, because you also have to put together um, uh, policies, you have to put together processes, and you also set like uh, targets and data points but all of this basically now comes together and we create this one list basically. Um, the action here is definitely to prioritize it because as we know, the first three years is the introduction phase uh, of the CSRD and uh, you can really like take these three years to prioritize your KPIs and see what are the high priority KPIs, what are the medium pr uh, priorities of these KPIs and what are the low priorities. So we advise our clients most of the time, take the first year to do the high priority things, the second year, the medium and uh, third year, um, the low priority things, so that you also can uh, um, connect it to other laws maybe that uh, you have to comply to as uh, in your company. And what's also important to add to that is that the ESRES already gives a, a phase in uh, priority wise. And yeah. in the first year, it's more about the environmental, the governance, uh, and you don't have to uh, report on the financial effects yet. And the second and third year, the social parts come uh, into place because they also acknowledge that a lot of information is very hard to get from your value chain about yeah. other workers. So they give you more time to uh, start working on that. Although the time is there, it may still be the case that it might take two years so that you need to start with those uh, KPIs as a high priority as well, because it's just a complex one uh, yeah. to start with. Precisely. So when you know your priorities, basically, in KPIs and uh, how you want to, to divide that also like uh, within your operational layer, who has actually this information and who basically like um, be able to put in a working group to actually like help uh, get to this information. So you hear already it's in, um, handy then to form work groups based on the groups of KPIs that you identify, um, then you really teach them also like what does it mean basically to report on requirements, what is data collection, what is clean data, that is like one of the um, uh, questions uh, we have basically um, most of the times from clients or get from clients. Then also like um, how to prepare the data gathering and um, start the data gathering. And um, the important part here in these actions in this phase is, and that is different one than maybe like from starting this whole CSRD project, is really after the double materiality analysis, something interesting, complicated is happening. It is that there is a switch between the heaviness of the workload, not only on a project manager that is maybe from a sustainability background, but really that there is more need for a person that is either finance or data driven, basically, um, or aligned with the IT team, because they have to, in the end, basically um, either um, build new structures around it, have incremental steps of really like forming an idea of where this is all is going, basically, which you also will see in the next steps to really 
do an automated reporting process later on, but they need to be involved in this part already. They need to share basically the project uh, um, load um, with the project manager here because they have to help the operational um, departments to really understand um, what they want with the data gathering, where data, where they can find anyways the data basically, because um, it is like that that we definitely um, see that it's needed to do it in incremental steps so that it's not directly, oh, let's have a tool and let's put all the information in there. A lot of clients from us think, oh, can you give us a tool? Let's like just find the tool and we put the data in there. Um, what, data? <laughs> what, what data? Where is it coming from? Um, who is giving us this data? Are you communicating internally in your departments about this? All these workshops you see here, this is what um, this is about to really like get this communication started and develop a little bit a, a same language in your um, company together so that they work together um, properly and start really with um, an overview. You see that we are um, um, created templates on data definition manuals um, and an overview with like very clear questions for your suppliers. So um, we, uh, like you know from the EFRAG, they um, provided the data definition manual. However, in the Praxis, we see when we give them um, this overview or um, ask them, like, how, what do you think about this overview? They're like, yeah, but our employees still don't know what to do, basically. It's like a nice overview. However, they don't know what to do. So we did the next step and really translated these like data definition manuals on like, what does that mean, basically, um, for the different companies? Um, how much kilograms, cubic meters, like what is the precisely unit size basically that needs to be measured, but also what kind of question do you need to ask either your company or a supplier in order to gather this data. So that is the first incremental step that uh, you need to have and that we would have basically for you and our templates and um, are working in these workshops with the operational level together to create this um, uh, first collection and really start basically with the high priority KPIs to uh, um, gather them in uh, different forms that fits the best for the company because there is no one size fits all for companies because there is either like a production or service company and there are different um, systems that you are using um, which decide what actually is possible to be used. So that is happening in the connecting KPIs and measurement space. Um, what you also see a lot um, is that uh, collecting data um, in a structured way is important. What we said, like that the operational layer really has to understand that um, the financial people very much often use these like Excel tables. And this is where it goes also to the CFO um, and uh, the IT data team basically will be um, responsible to put that all together. And they are more used to Excel files. And this is all so what actually helps to put either a dashboard together or a very true report um, in that sense. But most of the operational levels um, departments never have like de dealt with like such a such a load of information or excel sheets so therefore they need like a um, introduction period basically that is what we do basically with this um uh, with this workshops and uh, most important um, information there for them is very very much like where to get the data from, that, that is the big question, where um, to put the data and IT needs to facilitate uh, this process. So they um, not only like, uh, they cannot have this like crazy tool, um, which is not there by the way, this is not existing at the moment. Uh, no one has the golden grail uh, um, basically of um, CSRD tools. Um, it's very much like, you first have to get the data, you have to work with an incremental step because you're not going to completely um, restructure your IT system directly and um, then to really also work with the IT department or data team um, together to see where do you want to go. Since this whole project is not just a one-time thing, it's a transformation that from the point on that you have to report uh, by the CSRD that this will be part of your operational processes. So in the data collection and measuring phase, we really look at 
how are we going to make sure that this is not just working groups that have a one time project yeah. and next year we have to start the project all over again? How are we incorporating all these tiny data collection steps in everybody's operational activities so that at the end of the year, <laughs> it will not take as much work, although it will always be, uh, of course, a lot of work to set up the sustainability yeah. report, but that the data collection is already incrementally done throughout the year. So in the data collection and measuring uh, phase, we are really thinking about optimization of the structure, about the future, the, the sustainable uh, operational processes on data uh, wise. But it's also important since, well, you heard it, a lot of people were starting to collect data, everybody did their thing, IT is facilitating, but also to keep in mind, we made a priority. We did, did some things this year and we said next year we're going to do the same, uh, but for other KPIs. So that it's also not just thinking about keeping the data collection that you already started with in an operational way, but also thinking how are we going to incorporate new reporting requirements every year? Because maybe your materiality analysis will change, uh, like the results will change, so new indicators will pop up. And therefore also new um, uh, actions need to be taken. So this data collection part is not just this one time thing, it's how are we going to do it the rest of our organizational life. Yeah, and what you can think there, it's not like um, we all think, oh, this is like so crazy complicated. In that sense, it's ESG. It's like ecological social governance. There are things on ecological things, for example, the CO2 footprint that a lot of companies already measure. This is like one of the things in there. It's just that there are like extra KPIs like added basically to each of these three buckets every year, just like different things come or there will be exchanged for the priorities of your company basically. So it's really much like create these three buckets basically for your company. What do you want to measure? And um, basically tell um, your team like, hey, we are going to put like uh, more things there and we will figure out how that works the best basically for us and what are the priorities in there so that we can add each year or um, exclude specific KPIs. Because next to the data collection for the sustainability report, there's also um, the ESRES requires you to have sustainable KPI steering uh, information. So not that you just look as management team at the end of the year to sustainability report and be like, oh, we said we were going to change that didn't do it, uh, but that you have like uh, frequent reporting, maybe monthly or quarterly on certain topics to monitor how is the sustainable impact of the organization. We therefore in our eight steps advise in the seventh step to develop an impact dashboard, which we define as a dashboard that shows finance and sustainability KPIs. And KPIs. Um, in the, this, this dashboard then gives you the possibility to start steering on social and environmental KPIs. You should look at it as in, okay, we can show the diversity percentage within the organization, but if it's like 46 uh, male, uh, 64 uh, female, are we going to change that? Oh, that's, that's not 100%. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but it's not something you can immediately uh, change so that you really decide on KPIs that also uh, give you the influence to change it immediately. So if you're just looking at CO2 emission, that's always a bit vague, yeah. but the travel, uh, like sustainable travel options, did the sustainable travel options usage go up or down? Like that you really can make a decision as a management team to um, inform the manager layer beneath you, we need to change certain steps. Uh, we have implemented the policy and now we're monitoring it that um, that it gives the management team really the, the steering mechanism to make decisions instead of just looking at the annual report uh, at the yeah. end of the year. And I mean, it's also definitely like the win-win situation. It's not that you only need to report, but that you as a company get also something out of it and make your company better and also more effective based on all these information. It's not just like to have the information for the sake of only reporting for it. No. And then last but not least, uh, the final CVD report. Uh, there are certain uh, requirements also asked for it. It has to be according to the reporting standards. So in this phase, you will really check, OK, all the data that's collected. How are we going to report on it in, yeah. a, in a way that uh, ESRES requires from us? 
the auditor needs to look at it and will uh, approve it, but it also needs to be sent towards the government in inline XPRL. What does it mean? <laughs> um, in finance world, it's already quite familiar that if you give your uh, like your financial information to your uh, bookkeeper or accountant, they will send it to the government in with certain tagging that this is your revenue, this is your uh, yeah. loss, this is like your uh, earnings before interest uh, taxes. Blah. Yeah. So those tags are already identified. Currently, the European Commission also setting up a taxonomy for the disclosure codes. But so you cannot just make a word document and be like auditor here. Thank you. Yeah. No, it also needs to be tagged. So there are tools. We're also creating a tool for that uh, with the uh, uh, ESRES tags in that. Uh, but just so you know, all the data that's collected, often those numbers are not the final report yet. You also have to describe yeah. the the trends. Did you do the? Did you uh, receive uh, the information? How did you receive the information? Because the auditor needs to check whether the report uh, that you're well, reporting about is the, the content is really based on facts and not something that like the marketing uh, department was uh, really created for a few weeks and uh, set up the whole uh, sustainability report. Yeah, and um, that is an, uh, an important fact in that sense. When you're either hiring consultants or um, uh, doing steps by yourself to prepare for CSRD, that is a different thing than it has been before. Um, consultants didn't need to explain or report on like what they actually have done in your company. Now um, you have to really ask them if you if they either like say goodbye to your company or like uh, you're switching from consultant. They they really report on like what have they done specifically because otherwise um, the preparation for CSRD uh, mostly takes a company um, a year to one and a half years basically to really like get everything done and to report on their on their steps also then after one and a half years maybe some employees have left uh, things have changed um, and uh, all the information is lost basically and you cannot get it back basically on or trace it back on how that has been done and then indeed you're standing a month before actually needing to hand in your CSRD report and then you have to retrace or have to make up these steps you don't want to bring yourself basically in this uh, situation so it's a very important part that has to be done in all of our steps we directly included how we um, did that so we really much like put the focus on like documenting documenting mm -hmm. documenting that's why you see also these kind of templates that we um, created um, for, we created templates on the 12 ESRS books um, um, so that the CSRD report basically exists out of these 12 books um, together. Um, that is uh, the CSRD report so that um, based obviously on what you need to report on from the double materiality analysis um, uh, so uh, that um, these CSRD um, templates are the collective um, between what the EFRA said but also what the process has looked like and what you have to actually um, give as overviews as a company and uh, that actually shows the result that you are um, yeah came up with so that you have the best standard uh, the biggest standard and obviously then for smaller companies they can like look what um, is uh, needed for them because there are the voluntary standards as well so they can use these templates uh, as well in this form. And if you're uh, like wondering EFRA, what's EFRA? Because the exactly. European Financial Reporting Advisory Group, they drafted the ESRA standards which the European Commission uh, adopted. So, yeah. so that's the advisory group that created the standards for both the large companies and indeed the voluntary yeah. SME ones that are now in consultation, <laughs> uh, which is also important if you are here and you're just in a, a small medium enterprise yeah. um, and you are lucky enough not having to oblige with the company. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, if you just report on those uh, SME standards, that, that should be everything a, a CSD compliant company can ask from you. So yeah. that's also a, co a proactive way. But we have another webinar on that, so you can watch the recording <laughs> uh, on that indeed. Like you see already, we try um, to approach this whole topic um, uh, with a smile in that sense, because we know that uh, this is quite a heavy topic. And I know that in the last half an hour, we have given you quite some information and like 
like uh, raced basically through it and uh, that uh, um, we basically like also um, uh, are very deep in the topic. That's why we also gave this uh, webinar specifically on the on the later part so that there is also some more information out there because we see that that is especially like lacking because the most uh, consultancies don't have the really like an own data uh, department that uh, supports uh, um, uh, clients in this uh, journey. So please feel free really in the chat if we race through some things that you want a little bit more explanation or much more explanation about, please uh, write it in the chat because we're going uh, um, now towards the part like what uh, can uh, we actually um, do after the uh, um, double materiality analysis for you. I mean, we explained a little bit already like uh, what we can do for you, um, but now we go a little bit more deeper in um, services that we in general provide and tools that uh, we put together. I mean, in the beginning, before basically um, only the data part, we um, have a CSRD quick scan that we uh, do with companies a lot to have a very realistic like approach to uh, where a company stands and what they actually need in order to become uh, CSRD compliant. Um, then a double materiality analysis tool so that really this part is uh, like more synchronized and data driven also for auditors to check and that you really know that you put everything together. But then when we dive deeper in the implementation and uh, reporting uh, phase, it's uh, that we have all the um, policy templates also. It's uh, more than 20 policies that a company has to create for CSRD to become compliant. We um, put together um, all the overviews for that, um, but also the data definition menu with all the um, supplier questions that you really know like what to ask them and really just ask this question and then you have basically everything together. So to not break your head about like, what does the ESRS say? Like what subtopic? And like that you really can go from the results of your double materiality analysis, can look in the list and say like, oh, this is the question I need to ask. So let's ask this question. Um, so that uh, that is an important We did the part. thinking for you. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I can tell you it's definitely like a, a good banter in our team because like obviously we have data people and basically the impact people and um, understanding each other. We try to basically do the discussions that most uh, companies need to do basically with each other to really understand what is needed um, for the client, what is needed in order to um, fast track basically this um, reporting needs for social and ecological parts because the finance sector had 60 years basically to set together or set up the financial reporting and the social and ecological um, department has like three to five years basically. So therefore a lot of fast thinking has to be done. Um, we talked also here, coming back to this visual um, about uh, impact dashboard, um, uh, which we have and which is uh, handy and needed for com being compliant for CSRD, um, where basically all the um, information can come together and that you can see them in one overview. We have reporting templates and like we said, much more also on the uh, on the training side. Um, <laughs> there, the offering in that sense and um, for the consulting tooling and data part, because as we said in the beginning, um, we not only have the companies as basically our clients, but also the consultants and uh, the auditors. So therefore, we really our offers reach from a do it yourself approach to really like um, uh, in house consulting. And that is not because uh, we cannot choose or like don't know what to focus on. It's very much on like uh, that we believe as a company that, um, uh, that. Yeah, the other companies that need to comply to CSRD are a squeeze either in their resources, uh, in the operational layers, um, uh, in uh, their financials, basically to create a fast track, basically to be compliant to CSRD. And then we want to meet um, you where you are and how you are able to either support companies in becoming ready for CSRD or um, as a company to say, oh, in this design phase, we want you in-house 
in-house consulting, but afterwards we want to do it ourselves. So we have uh, in the tooling side, we have the virtual CSRD consultant basically to really um, dive, uh, have all written down all our information so that you are able to, um, with a project manager internally for you, to really go through everything. Like we already said, the policy templates, the ESRS templates, we have even summaries on the ESRS on like uh, each of the books and seven pages, like easier done. Um, uh, and then the data collection uh, um, part uh, at the end is really much like the survey questions, um, extra workshops on data definition and learning people um, how to do that and also defining the sustainability KPIs um, for your company. Next, logically, to the consulting part, uh, which is the biggest part on really like helping um, in all the ESRS uh, data collection um, consulting part, but also brainstorming what is the best fit on the ESG data collection software. Yeah, because I think people underestimate the complexity of having a social KPI, where to put it, because if we think about social, immediately think, oh, we put it at HR and but it can also be part of our procurement as suppliers. What, yeah. How are they uh, treating their uh, like their uh, workers, but also your customers and the data privacy of your customers? Like it's the social topics is so much broader than just HR. The same uh, sound uh, sounds for us environmental, as in we often think, oh, that's about CO two emission and it's over. But yeah. how are you using like? Um, your materials, your in and out flow, but also like how do you decide which material to use in your production process? So then it becomes part of the operation. So yeah. a lot of people will be involved. And if there is only one person in the whole organization understanding the data IT infrastructure, how are they going to help all of the different working groups? So that's why we really want to support also the organization in thinking how to set this up in such a way that it's facilitates the organization and not that you just buy a yeah. tool and be like everybody put it in please and everybody's like but I don't know what to do so yeah. really this soft landing um, so that you can really make it like your own process and not depend on others yeah precisely um so um before we uh, we say goodbye indeed we want to um give you the chance to um ask any burning questions uh in the chat because i know like as we said already it's uh been quite a, a mouthful what we were like talking about um uh, yeah uh, so any questions so like silent in the chat <laughs> Well, maybe we were super clear or they fell yeah. asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Um, uh, then um, if we um, don't get any um, any questions in the chat for now, um, feel free indeed to write us an email or um, uh, indeed like uh, go to our website, which you see here also with the QR code. Um, we um, definitely give more webinars or you have seen basically our other webinars on our website um, under the tech uh, insights and videos. You can find like more information about uh, different target audiences and also all the white papers that we have uh, um, written basically about uh, these uh, different topics. Um, we also publish like more cases um, in the um, in, on our website and we'll also like do that uh, um, in the next uh, weeks more. Um, and also um, from April on, there will be a, a new training course, a four hour training course, our CSRD Essentials uh, e-learning e course indeed available. That is um, possible either like for um, bigger companies to really train all their employees to understand more about CSRD. It's all based on these like eight steps uh, implementation uh, method, but also um, to either like um, as a consultant who fast track basically their learning process and wants to understand what's uh, basically going uh, going on in there. So mm -hmm. therefore that is uh, possible. We see a little bit in the uh, chat people writing. <laughs> so uh, seeing and that um so that is basically um what is coming up 
Yeah, yeah. For us. So, um, curious what's being written <laughs> now and then. Um, but otherwise, um, um, just uh, ask your questions also um, if you want in the chat and then we will come back to it later. So thank you so much, um, everyone, uh, for today and we wish you a good uh, Thursday and see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.